I counted 67 steps. Now these are the spiral stairs to the top of the gatehouse tower and it is two-way so you might have a close encounter with a stranger coming the other way. The views from the top are wide-ranging of the house and the Kent countryside. The National Trust now permit photography inside many of their houses, but no tripods or flash. So it's back to traditional techniques now aided, of course, by modern technology. Because of the increased sophistication of image stabilizers in many cameras and lenses, it is possible to handhold in low light whilst keeping the ISO value at 200. I am able to achieve this with my current kit of the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 Pro lens. Here is an image where the shutter speed was over a second, a shot made difficult because the bed is behind a glass panel. I am featuring my recent visit to Knoll at Seven Oaks in Kent. It was a beautiful sunny day. Not the best for taming contrast, but the property wasn't busy, as I went before the schools broke up for their summer holidays. Choosing July 2022 for a visit tied in with a successful completion of an extensive conservation project by the National Trust. Much of Knoll was built between 1456 and 1486, when it was bequeathed to the See of Canterbury until 1538, when Archbishop Cranmer was forced to give it to Henry VIII. Later, Knoll was held briefly by the Earl of Leicester, but by 1605 the freehold had been acquired by Thomas Sackville, the first Earl of Dorset, whose descendants have lived here ever since, adding and changing much to the house and estate. The house can be viewed most days during season, but the garden is only open on four days. I was lucky and surprisingly by chance. I keep the camera controls simple, avoiding settings as much as possible that cannot be undone. I saved the raw, giving me greater flexibility in post-production in products like Adobe Lightroom. Lighting inside a stately home is not only low, but also of high contrast, and often with a mixture of light sources that require careful correction, but executed manually. To illustrate, compare this same shot out of camera with post-production. I might surprise you that I set the camera mode on program, not to be confused with auto. If required, you can still add your usual personal settings such as white balance and exposure compensation. Program saves time, especially when other people are milling about. By default, it will use the widest aperture according to conditions and ISO setting to give the photographer the fastest available shutter speed for hand holding. Micro Four Thirds at f4 gives more depth of field than full frame because the focal lengths of its dedicated lenses are shorter. A 50mm full frame standard lens is 25mm in micro four thirds, giving added benefits for critical focusing in low light when everything needs to be sharp. 
I find HDR colors manufactured. I can exercise greater correction control in Lightroom from a raw file. Therefore, to complement what I do in post-production, I spot meter better executed with an electronic finder. I don't trust matrix or ESP in these tricky lighting situations. The technique takes a bit of practice. You won't get it right first time, but once mastered, it is highly creative. I spot meter close to a highlight, and getting that right is the clever bit. Broadly, I search for a setting where the highlight is slightly overexposed, allowing shadows become underexposed. These elements of incorrect exposure are corrected in Lightroom, together with any color casts caused by a mixture of lighting. This is not perfect. If you overexpose highlights too much, they cannot be corrected, and increasing the exposure in shadows can inadvertently add noise, which actually I prefer to burnt out highlights. It is a delicate balancing act, and the trick is to get the exposure balance right, and to help me, notice that I expose to the left, not right. Like anything claiming to be artistic, it takes practice, often based on trial and error. There isn't a magic number. Furthermore, because of restricted access, you will end up with wonky images. These can be corrected in Lightroom. If the presets don't work, use the sliders. This technique has one big advantage often overlooked. It can be undone. However, when saving to RAW, make sure that your software does not permanently overwrite any changes to the original file, that is the one out of camera. Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop saves changes to a separate sidecar file that can be deleted, leaving the photographer with the original image as taken in camera. To conclude, a few more National Trust houses that I have recently visited, allowing photography inside where I have used the same technique.